Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to be repairing this part side electric screwdriver which I purchased from Lidl and indeed reviewed on my channel over three years ago now. Now if you're unfamiliar with Lidl, I've explained it before but essentially they are a discount supermarket, they sell cheap food and drink and household products but in the middle of the store or the, the middle of Lidl as they like to, to call it in their you know brochures and stuff like that, they have uh, a, a random selection of stuff that you wouldn't normally expect to see in a supermarket uh, and usually at a highly discounted price. Quite often it's like camping equipment one day, you know the next day it might be you know a uh, stuff for your bedroom or you know like duvet sets and stuff like that and quite often they do sell tools and indeed part side is their own brand of tools and you know what despite them being cheap they last the reasonably good build quality and i have had no problems with them at all this screwdriver like i say is over three years old i use it every week 100% I use this every week, multiple times a week, and unfortunately, after three years, it's just not got the minerals anymore. It's starting to lag under, you know, under loads, and even on light loads, it doesn't perform. The battery doesn't last as long as it did when it was new. So I thought in this video, we would replace the battery and hopefully get it back up to how it used to be in terms of performance. Now, I have already opened this, and I'm pleased to say it is a standard 18650 battery that's inside it of which i have many lying around i salvage a uh, laptop uh, battery packs and stuff like that and the pack i'm going to use tonight came out my friend's laptop who uh, whose laptop sorry failed after just 13 months and he always had it on his desk plugged in it's never the batteries have hardly ever been cycled maybe other than the odd train journey to london or something like that i'm content that the batteries i'm going to use tonight are definitely better quality and will last longer than the one that's currently in it remember this is uh, three years old it will be over three years old now the manufacturer of this one is pulley is that pulley or pulley uh, and it's only an uh, sorry only a 1500 milliamp hour cell as well the ones I'm going to use out of the pack are Sanyo 18650s and they have a capacity of 2100 milliamp hours. So, like I say, this is far, you know, far and beyond going to be better than this one here. So, what I'll do now is I'll pause the video and I will get everything ready to go and then we'll commence with the repair itself. Catch you in just a second. Okay, right, I've got my battery extracted. All I did was uh, take some, you know, sort of snips here and gingerly cut the, the solder tags, uh, solder tabs in between. You've got to be careful when you're doing that, especially when you're doing the positive side, because if the uh, metal were to cut through the, the outer insulation here, it may short the actual casing and, and, you know, will cause a dead shot and could obviously be quite dangerous, especially if these are fully charged. So what I've done is just left a short amount of the, the solder tag that's already there. You could, of course, um, I don't recommend it, but you could, you know, use something like this and solder direct to the battery. But let's say I don't recommend it because you, uh, you might damage the battery or cause it to explode or whatever you don't want to be heating these up too much uh, all i'm going to do now is uh, tin the tags that are there so let's just clean the tip of the iron a little bit of solder on there heat it up and there we go don't want to be heating up for a great length of time that should do it and just the same on the other side There we go. Now that's a battery prepped, a replacement battery. Um, then all we're going to do now is uh, cut the insulation off the the old uh, battery that's inside the device. Now the protection, these are unprotected cells, but they are protected, of course, by the circuitry inside that, that charges it. Oh, this is a bit manky inside. Uh, just to make my life a little bit easier, I will just uh, refill that solder. And get that lead off. There we go. That's just a seat, you know, the case of the seam at the other side. Okay, so we'll take the positive lead off now and just remove that insulation. 
And all I'm going to do now is, is put the new battery in. So I've got a couple of bits of heat shrink sleeve in here just to give it a little bit of protection. Looking at where it's going to sit, the insulation's maybe a little bit overkill, but it's better to have it than not, of course. And here's a new battery. So the positive side, if it's not marked, um, the negative side normally has a slit to indicate it's a negative or it's, it's completely flat. The positive side normally has like a, an, a col different coloured insulator just to, to highlight that it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the positive side. I just realised that this solder has obviously got squished when I dropped it down. Okay, so we'll do the positive side first. And all we're going to do is reflow that uh, joint. And let it cool down. Like so. Probably put a little bit more solder on that to be honest. Doesn't look too pretty. That's better. And we'll put the heat shrink sleeve in over. Now you can do this with a lighter or a you know, hot air gun. I've got my hot air thing here, so I'll just do it that way. There we go. Reasonably tidy. And we'll do the other side now. I'll pop a little bit more soda on the lead this time. And then we'll just reflow it again. Like so, let it cool. And we'll pop the heat shrink sleeve in over and do exactly the same as we did with the other side. And there we go. Um, just for an added little bit of protection, I've just put a, a little bit of duct tape over here. I mean, this is totally unnecessary, but like I say, it's, it, it, it's easy enough to do and it's not going to cause us any problems. And that's as simple as it gets. So all it remains to do is put the cover back on. That's working at least. Let's make sure that the case is going to shut properly. And then we'll tighten the screws back up. In fact, we won't do them all. That'll do it just now. I'll put those in after the video. But there we go. I mean, that's a a, a nice, easy repair. It's something really cheap and simple to do, especially if you've got little bits and pieces knocking around in your workshop that would ordinarily go to the, the waste recovery centre. If we can reduce, recycle and reuse stuff uh, ourselves, then, of course, that's got to be a good thing, uh, given everything that's going on with it the climate and the environment and all that good stuff little things like that can make a big difference so there we go hopefully you enjoyed that not a particularly thrilling video but at least you you've seen how you can make a really simple repair or upgrade to a piece of equipment you've got and hopefully it will last a few years longer if i get another three years out of this i'll be laughing i think it cost me about 12 pound at the time and it's been a really good tool um I, to be honest i'd be lost without it i mean this is handy but this is just easier to grab especially if you're outside doing something Anyway, I digress slightly. Thank you very much for watching as always. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on the fat head down here. And until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.